The most unusual research adventure I've taken this year is the story of Samuel Clinton Metz, or Clint as his friends called him. This led me to the most heartbreaking story of family loss during the blizzard of 1906, which was widely reported across Nebraska and as far away as Texas and Idaho. Nebraska weather is brutal. No Land's End or Carhartt anywhere in sight back then, and that weather, it was not kind to Clint and his family. Mother and her children, lost in nightly gloom, wander in the darkness, seeking for their home. Fast the snow is... Ever get that feeling, you know, like there are entire stories just hidden right there in plain sight? Well, buckle up. Because today, we're about to crack one wide open. Mm -hmm. I first found Clint in an article. It was about the courthouse in Holt County. He wasn't exactly winning any popularity contests because for some reason, he was trying to marry Susie Carver. My tiny little Aunt Susie, who was barely 14 years old at the time. I remember thinking, good grief, Mr. Metz, couldn't you find somebody even remotely near your age? The paper claimed that he was 40 or 50 years old. This, understandably, made me want to know more because this guy was not winning any awards for best life decisions. So I went down this research rabbit hole. Uh, as it turns out, Clint was no stranger to controversy or to loss. He married several times, Pearl Mae Barker, Mary Neeland, Eva Smalley, and none of these relationships ended with hearts or flowers. But the real tragedy, that was the blizzard of 1906. Fast the snow is falling, cold the wintry blast, faint with weary wandering, then lost hope that last. And heartbreak, sadly, was something Samuel knew all too well because in 1906, tragedy struck. I'm talking a devastating blizzard ripping through Harrison, Nebraska, where Samuel and his family were living. Oh, yeah, I remember reading about this. Those old newspaper accounts from back then, they're chilling. You can almost feel it. You know, the wind, the snow. Yeah. Now, when I say the weather in Nebraska could be unforgiving, in March of 1906, Clint's wife, Mary, and his two daughters, Lottie and Nellie, who were ages seven and five, they were going between his brother's house and his other brother's house, and they were caught in a blizzard. They never made it. A search party went out looking for them, and the next day, the school teacher found Mary not far from her destination, and a few hours later, they found the children huddled together in a snowdrift. And that wasn't even Clint's first loss that year. Just a month earlier, his infant son, George, had passed away as well. So imagine losing your entire family in less than 30 days. Clint's life was starting to read like a Shakespearean tragedy at this point. And the newspapers, they describe the search for their bodies, the children found huddled together. It's just heartbreaking. Yeah, to lose your entire immediate family in such a short span of time, yeah. it's almost unimaginable. You know, it makes you wonder how someone even begins to put the pieces back together after something so devastating. But Clint, he was nothing if not resilient. And after losing his entire family in that awful blizzard, he tried to move on. Within a year, he had remarried to a lady named Mrs. Maribel Collins. She had a little daughter, and the paper talked about how wonderful this marriage was going to be. She came from Ohio to marry him, and this marriage lasted 12 days. Yeah, that's right, just shy of two weeks, which, frankly, <laughs> tells you everything you need to know about Clint's luck with women. So naturally, Clint kept moving around Nebraska and apparently from one marriage to the next, something kept pulling him, whether it was loneliness or just plain stubbornness. He wasn't going to give up on finding a life partner. And that brings us back to Holt County and Susie Carver. This is the part of Clint's life that made me pause and think, what in the world was going on here? 
So here's a man in his 50s trying to marry a 14-year-old girl. And I'm not saying Frontier Life was easy or that people always made great choices or that there were, you know, lots and lots of women available. But this was still something else. The newspapers had a field day with it. And little Susie, I did some math. She was born the same year as Clint's oldest daughter, one of the girls he lost in the blizzard. And I wonder if he thought of that while he was there with her at the courthouse. Uh, two courthouses, actually. He took her to Holt County first, and they refused him. So then he took her to Antelope County, where he had no better luck. It seems like that's kind of the story of Clint's life, looking for better luck. Clint, my friend, why did you think this marriage made sense? Were you just that lonely? Or did somebody talk you into it? Maybe promising you money or land in exchange for this marriage? What did you think about Samuel's headspace at that time? Was he a vulnerable man taken advantage of? Or was there something more to his involvement with Susie? What we know is that Clint kept going. By 1914, he had married again to a woman named Eva Alder. This marriage lasted a few years, and then it fell apart, too. And after all those years of wandering through Nebraska, back and forth from one end to the other, he finally ended up in Colorado, back with family. He lived with his brother for the last few years of his life. So in a way, his life comes full circle. After years of wandering, multiple marriages, he ends up back where he began with family. There's something kind of poetic about that, isn't there? Like, no matter how far we wander, family has a way of, I don't know, drawing us back in. So, what do we make of Clinton Metz? A man whose life was filled with unimaginable loss, strange decisions, but relentless resilience. He may not have had the smoothest ride through life, but his story is one that kind of sticks with you because sometimes history leaves us with more questions than answers. And maybe it's those unanswered questions that make the past unforgettable. You wonder, in those quiet moments surrounded by family, did he ever think back on everything? The hardships, the loves he lost and found, that constant search for stability, for connection, that seemed to define so much of his life? It's the question that always lingers, isn't it? What did he make of it all? What would he say if he could look back? Any regrets? See God's holy angel Bending o'er them wait Bear them to bright mansions Through the pearly gate Happy home in heaven Where are angels bright Happy land of sunshine Where there is no night Where there is Where there is no night